In today's video, we'll be checking out the GMK Tech K5. This little mini PC has the same AMD processor that was in last year's K2. But is it three models better? I'm not dead. What? I said I'm not dead yet. Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. So here's what arrived. Yep, it's another box from GMK Tech. They sent us their product in exchange for a video review. No money was exchanged, and all thoughts and opinions are our own. Here's the box. And on the back, this is a K5. Wow, the lid was on very tight. It just doesn't want to let go. According to these stickers, this mini PC is armed with a Ryzen 7. And it has a type hologram. The included manual for the Japanese version comes in Japanese, English, and Chinese. And it also covers other GMK Tech high-end PCs. Comes with a quick start guide showing us how to install the Japanese keyboard. We get cables for power, HDMI, one meter in length, and a VESA mount so we can attach the computer to a wall or something. There's a power brick, and it's the usual HUN key that outputs at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, up to 120 watts. And a card? Boy! Let's move on to the specs. This one has the same CPU as the GMK Tech K2 that was released last year. However, there are many improvements. For example, a better case, display port, extra LAN port, better Wi-Fi, and one more NVMe slot. And while later Ryzen's have moved onto the 780M, we still have a lot of power at hand. They're currently at sale on their website for $469, but if you use our coupon code in the video description, you can get $30 off. Let's go in for a close-up. The K5 is using the same case design as many other GMK Tech models. With only stickers and one logo, this non-offensive design will feel at home in an office. On the front, we have a pinhole for a CMOS reset, a power switch, 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, and two ports for USB 3.2. On the right side, we have a large area for cooling, with a grill that should keep out some dust. On the back is where most of the action is. At the very top left, we have USB 2, USB 3.2, a display port, one HDMI, and two Ethernet LAN ports, good for up to 2.5 gigabits. We have a DC input, and along the bottom is where the air gets blown out. Then finally, Kensington. Kensington? Yes, Kensington. Oh. On the left side, we have more holes for cooling, and there's some more on the bottom. There's the VESA mounting holes down here, and there are rubber feet in each corner, allowing the computer to get a good flow of air from underneath. And inside the top of the case, we have a fan, with ventilation holes on each side. Let's get to the size comparison. The GMK Tech K5 is slightly larger than the K2. Bigger than the Geekom A7, a little cutie. And slightly taller than the B-Link Sur 6. And there there was a chewy locked box quarter of the size with the same case as the K8. It's identical. Here's a Nintendo Game Boy. A three and a half inch floppy disk, double-sided, double density, and a banana. Mmm, yum, 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 One measuring tape. And a Roybosch tea bag. The GMK Tech K5 is around four Roybosch tea bags big. Once we connect it to a monitor, set of speakers, and an all-in-one keyboard, we can finally turn it on. And at first boot, we're greeted to the Windows setup screen, where we tell it which language to use, username, turn off all the telemetry options, and a couple of minutes later, we're in, ready to go. All of the specs do check out, and we have Windows 11 Pro installed. It's not activated from the get-go, but once you go online, the activation process will be done automatically. There seems to be no tampering in Defender or Chrome, so we'll connect to the Wi-Fi, install all the Windows updates, Ryzen drivers, then we went to ninite.com to download some free software, which included Malwarebytes and Avast. We ran full system scans on both, and no viruses were detected, so we have a clean PC, and we can do as we like. But the thing is, we don't want to retread the same path. I mean, this computer pretty much shares the same spec as the K2 we reviewed last year. 
so we're absolutely confident that it can do the same, if not more. Including, but not limited to, YouTube in 4K, making music, and to play many games, such as Jim Power. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. The K5 sits comfortably in the middle of both the K2 and the next generation up. Also, it's leading the scores for graphics for machines that are using the 680M. It does, however, trade blows with the B-Link Sur 6, as that has a slightly higher boost clock. We have fairly decent speeds from our storage, but these scores indicate that we have a PCIe Gen 3 NVMe. We do know that this system can support Gen 4, but unfortunately not on this rodeo. We do have a Wi-Fi 6 e adapter, and signal strength is a reasonable 75%, with a router 20 meters away through two layers of drywall. We had no drop connections, but we hope to see better Wi-Fi strength in the next version up. Of course we can play a few games with our Bluetooth controller, and that was fine. And it even handled much of the upper tier emulation, such as Wii U, and PlayStation 3. There were some dips in Wipeout Fury, sometimes to 40 FPS, but it is playable and one of the more heavy games to run on the platform. We then tried some better Sarah Linux, where audio, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi all worked out the box. We could play classic games to our heart's content. But how is gaming performance on the K5 compared to the K2? Well, the number five is larger than two, so it's three better. Do the math. But let's put them in a quick head-to-head. -head. Let's start off with Dota 2. And we can see straight away that the K5 has better performance. While both mini PCs are running at the default settings, the power limits differ. The K2 at 35 watts, while the K5 is at 50 with better cooling in place. Of course, if you look at the top, you might think otherwise, but as the power limit is increased, it results in the generation of more heat, leading to diminishing returns. More examples of this can be found if we look at game benchmarks, like Rise of the Tomb Raider. And a favourite of this channel, Grid Autosport. During this test, the K2 started to slow down due to the memory and NVMe getting a bit hot, while the K5 battled on through. When it comes to fan noise, at idle, the K2 is fairly quiet. But gets louder under load. Pull in 60 watts. So let's move on to the K5. First up is the quiet profile in the BIOS. Pull in just under 14 watts from the wall. And under load, the levels match the K2, but even then we have a lower pitched whine, making this less noisy than its predecessor. And now we'll try the balance profile. This is default on the K5, and it'll adjust fan profile, as well as setting the power limit to 50 watts. And when in-game, it's a much noisier beast. And now I'll shift up to performance mode, which changes the power limit to 65 watts. And as we increase power, we do so to the temps, as well as the noise. Meow. Let's compare the insides. For the K2, it's very easy to access the storage and memory. All we need to do is pop off the top, while the K5 needs a small posi screwdriver. And maybe a guitar pick to pry open the top. And disconnect the fan. Ah. On both units, the memory is running at 4,800 mits. K2 with Crucial, and the K5 with a data. At stock, the K2 had no heatsink on the NVMe. We had to add that one ourselves. Whereas the K5 has a heatsink already from the factory. Both sticks are PCIe Gen 3, and while we do know our legs are... Um, Hiksemi? Anyone? And here's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, with the K5 having Wi-Fi 6E. Looking at the top of the K2, there's nowhere for the heat to escape, whereas the K5 has more space and good airflow. If you want to change thermal paste, access to the CPU heatsink on this is a bit more difficult, whereas the K2, we can just open the bottom.
Whee! Whoo! So one main difference is cooling, and unless you want to mod a K2, the K5 is much more reliable. Also, if we swing around to the back, we can see that we have one more LAN port, so we could separate networks, or if you have a router that supports it, we can have double the network speed. The K2 also has two HDMI ports, which only supports up to 100Hz and ultra-wide 1440p, whereas the K5 with its display port can support 144Hz. Saying that, we could get the same resolution with the USB-C port using a USB-C to DP adapter, but I think it's quite obvious now of the differences between these two machines. And it's about time for the pros and the cons. GMK Tech have created a high-end computer at a nice price, and even though it rehashes the CPU from the K2, the innovations it brings with the extra slots, ports and cooling give it more relevance. Unfortunately, at the default balance setting, it's a bit noisy under load, and considering AMD specify a TDP of 35 to 54 watts, we'd like to see a bit more thought regarding TDP and fan settings, but maybe this can be fixed later in a BIOS update. At the end of the day, the K5 feels like a refined version of the K2. It should have been called the K2S. It is definitely a decent machine, just change it to quiet mode and you'll be right as rain. Anyway, I think it's about time for a summary. It is tea time.